very good morning to all uh, today i'm going to present uh, seven clock naltrexone propofion and uh, behavior therapy alone and combined for binge eating disorder randomized double blind placebo control trial study uh, corresponding author carlos m grillo et al this journal uh, this paper, paper has been published in american journal of psychiatry uh then uh, editor in chief net h carling uh, md impact factor factor of this journal uh, 19.242 total uh, situations uh, in 5 years 48015 uh, this is official journal of american psychiatric association this is abstract introduction uh, binge eating disorder is a serious public health problem it is substantial social and economic problem. it is uh, defined by recurrent binge eating and marked distress without inappropriate weight compensatory behavior binge eating disorder associated with psychiatric medical disorders and the psychosocial impairment it is predictive of future medical conditions associated uh, strongly with obesity this psychiatric condition has behavioral psychological and neurological features distinct from medical diagnosis of obesity there is empirical support for cognitive uh, behavioral therapy and interpersonal uh, psychotherapy for binge eating disorder with typical re uh, remission rates of 50% and long term therapeutic benefits after 24 months however these specialist treatments are neither widely sought after nor readily available and they do not result in weight loss there is increasing evidence that behavioral weight loss therapy uh, a generalized and disseminable behavioral treatment produces Uh, binge eating outcomes in binge, uh, binge eating disorder that are comparable to those of cognitive behavioral therapy and interpersonal behavior therapy but with advantage of uh, significant weight loss uh, in behavioral weight loss trials remission rates of binge eating disorder ranged from 38 percentage to uh, 74 percentage and weight loss rates ranged from 2.6 percentage to 5.1 percentage lis dexamphetamine is the uh, only pharmacological, pharmacological treatment for binge eating disorder that has been approved by fda in the uh, usa it it has abstinence rates from binge eating of 32 percentage to 40 percentage however please dexamphetamine is not recommended for people who have a history of substance abuse and it is uh, limitation of use uh, section on the label states that is not recommended for weight loss and uh, that is safety and uh, efficacy for treating obesity have not been proven while several other medication have reduced binge eating to statistically significant levels only topiramate has uh, consistently reduced to both binge eating and weight loss when used alone or in conjunction with psychological treatment topiramate is not well tolerated and has a high rate of discontinuation even when they receive most effective treatments for binge eating disorder many patients do not uh, gain you know patients treatment goals and the strong correlation between binge eating disorder and obesity suggest that focusing solely on weight loss or binge eating is a false dichotomy that fails to meet patients preferences and medical needs uh, behavioral weight loss is the only psychological approach that has consistently produced weight loss alongside reduced binge eating in patients with binge eating disorder and obesity to date achieving weight loss in patients with binge eating disorder and obesity has been difficult treatments for obesity without binge eating disorder have been shown to be more effective in achieving weight loss than those for binge eating disorder therefore there is still a uh, pressing need to identify uh, effective pharmacological and combination strategies for reducing both binge eating and uh, weight in binge eating disorder despite the fact uh, that uh, several medication for weight loss have been approved by fda no centrally acting agents have been tested separately and in conjunction with psychological treatment for uh, binge eating disorder early said the lipase inhibitor was shown to uh, have no significant effect on binge eating and uh, to significantly improve weight loss uh, albeit modestly based on how leptin works it is hypothesized that uh, naltrexone propofen regulates food intake and weight anorexia is caused by leptin's excitatory effects on uh, proapio melanocortin uh, neurons in the hypothalamic melanocortin system uh, anorexic effects are produced by leptin's excitatory effects on proapio melanocortin neurons in the hypothalamic melanocortin system which block endogenous feedback that inhibits uh, proapio melanocortin activity naltrexone bupropion has been shown 
to be effective for obesity in studies, which led to its approval by FDA. One study found that it significantly improved behavior weight loss outcome for uh, obesity. A pilot study found that uh, naltrexone and bupropion was tolerated by patients with binge eating disorders and that the achieved treatment group had a higher percentage of patients lost weight uh, than the uh, placebo group. The purpose of this randomized uh, double blind placebo controlled trial is to determine whether behavioral weight loss and naltrexone bupropion alone or in combination can treat binge eating disorder with obesity as a uh, comorbidity. This is methodology. Uh, single randomized uh, controlled trial was approved by Yale Institutional uh, Review Board. Uh, this study has been conducted February 2017 to February 2021. Participants was provided written uh, informed consent. Participants were recruited through advertisements. Minimal exclusion criteria were used comprising clinical issues that regardless of setting uh, would dictate a need for alternative treatment or represent contradictory indications to naltrexone and bupropion. Eligibility criteria including DSM-5 criteria for binge eating disorder, age between 18 to 17 years, and a body mass index between uh, 30, uh, 30 to uh, 50, or more than 27.0 with obesity related comorbidity. Exclusion criteria included uh, concurrent treatment for eating or waiting disorder, uh, taking contraindicated medications, example opioids, uncontrolled medical conditions or contraindications to naltrexone propropion, example, cesare history, balmia nervosa, anorexia nervosa history, cardiovascular disease, psychosis, uh, bipolar disorder, systolic blood pressure, uh, more than uh, 160 uh, millimeter, uh, millimeter of mercury, uh, and uh, diastolic blood pressure, more than 100 millimeter of mercury, uh, heart rate, more than 100 beats minute, and pregnancy or breastfeeding. Uh, total 3,620 uh, samples have been inquired due to their express interest by telephone or email or web form. And uh, 972 respondents not screened due to their, uh, after initial inquiry, they never responded, lost to follow. Then uh, again, uh, 2,648 respondents have been screened due to their express interest and complete full or partial, screen, partial screening. And uh, to, uh, 2,359 respondents have been excluded from this study due to their uh, subst resolved, uh, so sorry, 700, uh, such as 715 respondents uh, have been excluded from this study due to uh, subst resolved binge eating disorder, and 201 respondents have been excluded from this study due to their medical condition, 437 respondents uh, excluded from this study due to their contraindicated medication, and 33 respondents excluded from this study due to uh, pregnancy or breastfeeding, and 172 respondents excluded from the study due to their BMA out of range, and 63 respondents excluded from the study due to age out of range, and 64 respondents excluded from the study due to current or lifetime, uh, 54 uh, respondents uh, from the study uh, due to their psychiatric condition, and 10 respondents excluded from the study due to their language difficulties, and uh, 81 respondents uh, have been excluded from the study due to current treatment for eating or weight, and 463 respondents uh, excluded from this study uh, due to their uh, providing not interest to, to participate in this study. And uh, finally, 66 uh, respondents ex uh, excluded from this study, uh, they have been uh, not eligible to participate in this study. Then finally, uh, 289 respondents were evaluated and signed a uh, consent form, uh, completed assessment and uh, uh, in the, in, in the two, uh, 289 respondents, 146 uh, respondents also been treated uh, due to the various conditions, and uh, seven respondents <laughs> have been participated randomization. Then they are not able to participate in the assessment area. Finally, 136 uh, respondents selected from uh, for this study. Uh, they have been divided into four groups. Uh, begin treatment. Uh, placebo group and naltrexone bupropion group and behavioral weight loss plus placebo group, behavioral weight loss plus uh, country group like naltrexone and bupropion group. Uh, in this first group, placebo group, uh, there are five dropouts. So 29 respondents only participated in this study. And uh, second group, uh, naltrexone bupropion, there are some uh, five uh, dropouts also presented there. In third group, 
there are eight dropout here and uh, fourth group behavioral weight loss plus country group here six dropouts you can be able to see randomization participants were randomized to one of four treatments in a balanced 232 uh, factorial design for 16 weeks placebo naltrexone propion and behavioral weight loss plus placebo and behavioral uh, weight loss plus country randomization without satisfaction uh, satisfaction uh, assigned participants to the four treatment in blocks of eight a biostatistician developed the randomization schedule which was concealed prior to each randomization. Medication was double blind, naltrexone, protopion and placebo were prepared in capsules and matched in appearance by the Yale Investigational Drug Service. Randomization assignment to behavioral weight loss conditions was uh, kept blinded from participants until treatment started. Assessors of uh, post-treatment outcomes were blended to whether participants received behavior weight loss in addition to uh, the medication. <coughs> participants were reminded before each assessment not to disclose any details about treatments uh, during their meeting with the assessors. Assessments, uh, there are some scales also uh, using this study like uh, eating disorder examination interview and uh, weight height also measured uh, fasting cholesterol levels like uh, high density uh, lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, and uh, glycated hemoglobin A1C levels were obtained uh, at the uh, baseline and post treatment assessments also done. Yeah, eating disorder uh, examination question also use this study. Uh, big depression inventory, three factor eating uh, questionnaire, food craving inventory, power of food scale also operate in this study. Treatment, behavioral weight loss therapy uh, followed the protocol originally developed and refined for obesity trials and since adapted for binge eating disorder. Behavioral weight loss was delivered in 45 minute sessions following the uh, manualized protocol. Participants uh, were given patient version manuals covering all the behavioral weight loss information, uh, information and components. Weekly homework assignments were keyed to specific material to reinforce learning and using behavioral techniques. Uh, Behavioral weight loss focuses on gradual behavioral lifestyle changes, including moderate uh, caloric decreases uh, with, with a goal of approximately 1,500 calories per day, improved uh, nutrition quality, uh, 30 percentage fat, and moderate physical activity, 30 minutes, uh, like uh, five, uh, five times weekly. Behavioral techniques include goal setting, monitoring food intake, and physical activity, stimulus control to achieve and maintain the lifestyle changes, and problem solving skills to overcome challenges. Uh, behavioral weight loss was delivered by 11 research clinicians with progr uh, programmatic interest in eating disorders and obesity. Six were clinical psychology and uh, six were uh, clinical psychology graduate students, and uh, five were post -doc uh, doctoral uh, psychologists. Clinicians <laughs> received intensive training in the manualized protocols and were supervised clinically by the investigator, uh, inv investigators to monitor quality and adherence. Supervision included review of the structure, uh, process, and content of sessions to ensure fidelity and to uh, prevent drift uh, per previous trials. Medication, uh, naltrexone, propion combination comprised with, uh, 32 mg per day of sustained and release naltrexone and uh, 360 mg per day of sustained release propion. Two tablets were taken uh, twice daily, each containing 8 mg of naltrexone and uh, 9 mg of propion. Placebo was given in capsule, matched in appearance and frequency. Naltrexone bupropion dosing began with one quarter of the full dose and was increased weekly until full dose was achieved by the fourth week. If patient developed intolerable side effects, the study physician reduced dosing to achieve tolerability. Uh, if patients experienced, uh, experienced adverse events or could not tolerate the medication, they were withdrawn from medication. Two faculty level study uh, physicians delivered the pharmacotherapy focused on medication management. Additional uh, uh, therapeutic intervention were prescribed. Medication adherence and the detailed side effects and the safety checklist were performed monthly. Monthly medication refills were accompanied by re review of medication and adherence and dosing schedules and uh, pill bottles were returned for, for pill counts at the post treatment uh, assessment. Statistical analysis. Uh,
both continuous and categorical outcomes uh, percent weight loss and reaching a weight loss of 5% respectively were used to evaluate the measure weight loss the category of 5% weight loss was based on the measure uh, weight loss from the beginning uh, and missing data were interpreted as failure to achieve 5% of weight loss and uh, at the post treatment assessment logistic regression tested at the uh, outcomes for categorical uh, outcomes like remission from binge eating or a 5% weight loss the two treatments weight weight loss and medication and how they interacted were the independent variables significant effects in the models were explained using odd radios and confidence intervals of 95 percent uh, here this is the first table uh, showing demographic uh, characteristics of overall uh, conditions in placebo controlled trial of naltrexone propion with or without behavioral therapy for binge eating disorder here uh, you can able to see total number of sample uh, 136 mean age is uh, 46.50 age of an uh, answer is 28.32 years uh, here in gender most of the respondents were female 81.6 percentage in race most of the percent belongs to white uh, 77.9 percentage and in ethnicity most of the people belongs to uh, non not hispanic and latino areas 85.3 percentage and uh, in sexual orientation uh, most of the uh, respondents belongs to heterosexual sexual orientation uh, of 921.9 percentage in education here total number of samples uh, in among four groups many of the people have done professional education like 31.7 percentage uh, in first group you can able to see uh, placebo mean age by is uh, 46.94 years age of onset uh, 25.45 uh, years uh, in gender here also most of the respondents were belongs to female in race also same white people also white people participated uh, here and uh, ethnicity also same sexual orientation also same and uh, education there is a uh, slight difference like uh, most of the respondents were uh, completed under graduation uh, 10 respondents to uh, 29.4 percentage and in second group naltrexone propion group uh, among 32 respondents uh, mean age is uh, 46.3 years and uh, age of onset 29.94 years uh, here you can able to see uh, sex race and uh, ethnicity almost same uh, like a female respondents participated uh, most and uh, white people also uh, participated more and uh, not hispanic and uh, latino region people also, uh, also participated more here uh, sexual orientation also heterosexual people also uh, practices they have done and uh, in education there is a slightly changes uh, here also professional uh, degree people participated in uh, third group uh, behavioral weight loss plus placebo total number of uh, respondents 35 uh, mean age 46.00 years and age of onset 28.29 years uh, here here also 1 2 3 4 Uh, like uh, in sex female respondents participated more and uh, race white people participated more and uh, ethnicity not hispanic and latino region people uh, participated in the sexual orientation heterosexual practices uh, practice uh, respondent uh, participated in education uh, there is a slightly changes uh, most of the respondents have done some college where they intermediate or high school but they mentioned some college in fourth group behavioral weight loss plus naltrexone propion total number of respondents uh, 35 uh, mean age 46.99 years and age at onset uh, 29.70 years uh, here also first among first four group almost same and uh, there is a slight changes in education area uh, many most of the respondents uh, have done uh, some college like intermediate or high school 
Table number two, clinical measures across treatment conditions in a placebo controlled trial of naltrexone, bupropion with or without behavioral therapy for binge eating disorder. Here you can able to see uh, eating disorder examination uh, interview, binge eating uh, criteria. Uh, like uh, in uh, third group, you can able to see uh, there is a huge difference, like a uh, minus 18.89 percentage when they comparing to uh, pre-treatment to post-treatment. In a uh, eating disorder examination, uh, questionnaire, when they applied to the binge eating uh, uh, group, here you can able to see in the fourth group, there is a huge number of difference, minus 12.79 uh, mean, mean value uh, revealed. And in weight, you can able to see in the, among the four group, uh, from the pre-treatment to uh, post-treatment aspects, there is a high, uh, matlab, huge number of weight loss, high number of weight loss, you can able to see minus 5.71 percentage. From the, uh, in the fourth group, when they doing like behavioral weight loss as well as contrary therapy. So here you can able to see more weight loss. The fourth group, EDE global score. Like total number of score, you can able to see in the fourth group, people had more uh, significant value. And uh, big depression, when, when they're going to apply big, uh, big depression inventory among these four groups, uh, for, uh, there are fourth, uh, fourth number of group, like uh, behavior weight loss as well as control therapy group has minimal depression symptoms, like minus 11.59 uh, percentage. And, uh, When they are applying uh, three-factor eating uh, questionnaire, three-factor uh, eating disorder questionnaire in the restaurant <coughs> category, here placebo group, <laughs> behavior weight loss plus placebo group has had a significant value. Disinhibition Dishim, also, during the disinhibition also, among the four groups, behavior weight loss plus placebo group, not control group, had a high number of uh, significant value. In the hunger also, and it, uh, there is a food craving inventory, when they applied food craving inventory and the power of food scale also, like a third group, without medication, placebo group. They are not applying country, uh, they had a significant value. In cholesterol level, uh, fourth number group, like a behavior weight loss and placebo, uh, we have weight plus uh, plus uh, country group. Country group has significant differences like minus 14.81 percentage and uh, high density lipoprotein. There is a al there is also seen uh, significant difference in fourth group and uh, low density lipoprotein also. There is a significant proportion seen in fourth group and uh, HbA1c. There is a significant value. Matlab fourth group have their they are reducing weight also sugar level sugar also they are reduced and cholesterol level also reduced due to their uh, like behavior weight loss therapy as well as contrary medication in this figure shows that uh, remission rates from the among these four group uh, like six uh, almost uh, 55 57 percentage uh, uh, respondent uh, score uh, respondent scored in fourth group when they are doing behavioral weight loss plus uh, control among the respondents and here frequency of past 28 days like first month second month this baseline also shows that when they giving like a uh, when they are applying a binge eating examination questionnaire by every month there is a fourth category people you can able to see uh, red color so they had they have been followed due to their therapy as well as control medication they following every diet process everything so they shows very significant level. in figure 3 uh, shows that weight loss among these four groups there are um, almost 37 uh, percentage uh, 37 percentage seems in fourth group, they are following uh, therapeutic aspects as well as medication. 
so they reducing more number of weight among these people and uh, weight and baseline also you can able to see red, uh, red color fourth group each in every month initially they first and second month they slightly differ from other group but uh, finally they achieve significant level discussion uh, in the study of adults with binge eating disorder and obesity behavioral weight loss and naltrexone and bupropion were associated with significant improvements with a consistent pattern of uh, behavioral weight loss being superior to no behavioral weight loss the co primary outcomes were binge eating example attaining remission and frequency and weight loss example attaining 5 percentage weight loss and percent loss for binge eating remission behavioral weight loss uh, was significantly superior to no behavioral weight loss and naltrexone bupropion was significantly superior to placebo but there was no significant interaction between behavioral weight loss and medication for binge eating frequency analysis using complementary measures revealed that behavioral weight loss was significantly superior to no behavioral weight loss but that naltrexone and bupropion was not significantly superior to placebo and the interaction between behavioral weight loss and the medication was not significant for weight loss analysis of rates of attaining 5 percentage weight loss uh, and of present weight loss both converged revealing that behavioral weight loss was significantly superior to no behavioral weight loss but that not naltrexone uh, bupropion was not superior to placebo and there was no significant interaction between behavioral uh, weight loss and medication the findings provide further support for the effectiveness of behavioral weight loss for binge eating disorder extending previous studies of behavioral weight loss in important ways like first the superiority of behavioral weight loss in this study supports the specificity of the effectiveness of behavioral weight loss uh, second the effectiveness of behavioral weight loss for binge eating disorder was observed across broad outcomes uh, reflecting eating psychological and metabolic clinical domains <coughs> these findings are encouraging given the well known difficulty in producing weight loss in patients with binge eating disorder uh, and comorbid obesity in comparing our 16 week findings to those of a similar albeit substantially longer uh, 56 week uh, trial for obesity without binge eating disorder the mean 4.4 percentage weight loss for binge uh, peer weight loss uh, placebo approximates their uh, 4.9 percentage weight loss whereas the mean 5.7 percentage weight loss for peer weight loss naltrexone as well as bupropion uh, was less than their 87.8 percentage weight loss the study findings provide support for the potential effectiveness of naltrexone bupropion for binge eating disorder uh unlike uh, sorry the binge eating remission rate for the uh, uh, country group which had roughly two times higher odds of uh, remission than the placebo group approximated the 36 percentage uh, to 40 percentage rates reported for uh, list exa vitamin the sole fda approved medication for binge eating disorder unlike this exa vitamin which is not indicated for obesity naltrexone bupropion is fda approved for obesity and this study implied fewer exclusionary criteria than list exa vitamin trials in terms of weight loss however naltrexone bupropion did not differ significantly from placebo and the observed 2.1 percentage weight loss was lower than the 6.1 percentage reported for obesity without binge eating disorder analysis revealed non significant interaction effects between behavioral weight loss and naltrexone bupropion which coverages uh, sorry converges with previ uh, previous binge eating disorder studies testing other medications combined with various psychotherapies except propramid future research include comparative states of different medications and of psychological versus pharmacological approaches designed with a priori test of moderators of outcomes limitation of the study uh, the general usability of findings Uh, to different settings or persons with different socio demographic and clinical characteristics is uncertain the sample size is had limited power to detect smaller magnitude main or interaction effects of treatment they did not include a behavioral weight loss uh, only in condition with or placebo longer term outcomes of these acute findings are unknown 
whether variations in clinicians adherence or patient uh, patients adherence to the behavioral pharmacological interventions moderated the outcomes is unknown strength of the study manualized uh, behavior therapy and pharmacotherapy delivered by trained and monitored psychologists and physicians independent assessment using well validated measures uh, minimal exclusionary criteria to enhance uh, generalizability and good retention conclusion they conclude that behavior weight loss and naltrexone propion <coughs> were associated with significant improvements in patients with binge eating disorder and obesity with behavior weight loss demonstrating superior improvements uh, concept checklist for if it is used for randomized clinical trial uh, first a title and abstract rct mentioned in the title and abstract summarized with the trial design uh, methods results and conclusions introduction scientific background and explanation of rational elaborated specific objectives hypothesis clearly not mentioned in the introduction methodology execution of uh, trial design such as parallel and factorial has been mentioned important changes such as eligibility criteria explained with the suitable reasons uh, settings and locations where data collector not mentioned interventions of uh, each group how they done replication not clearly mentioned and the primary secondary outcomes measured slightly mentioned sample size how it was determined that is mentioned when applicable interim analysis not mentioned method to use generate random allocation sequence was mentioned details of any restriction in randomization is not mentioned and the mechanism used to implement the random allocation sequence such as sequentially numbered container uh, describing any steps taken to conceal the sequence uh, until intervention were assigned not clearly mentioned who generate the random allocation sequence who enrolled participants and who assigned participants to intervention mentioned and who was uh, blinded after assignment uh, assigned assignment to the intervention for example participants care providers those assessing outcomes and how is mentioned statistical methods <coughs> everything has been mentioned and the results uh, in participants uh, flow diagram with uh, treatment details mentioned for each group losses and exclusions after a uh, randomization together with reasons mentioned dates defining the periods of recruitment and follow up not clearly mentioned the table showing baseline demographic and clinical characteristics uh, for each group for each group number of participants denominator included in each analysis and whether the analysis was by original uh, assigned group is mentioned and for each primary and secondary outcome results for each group and the estimated effect size uh, and its precision like a 95% confident inter interval is mentioned all important harms and unintended uh, effects in each group not mentioned in discussion area you can able to see uh, trial limitations imprecision and if relevant multiplicity of analysis is mentioned but addressing source of potential bias not clearly defined <laughs> interpretation consistent with results balancing benefits and harms and considering other relevant evidence mentioned with minimal examples other information here uh, everything i have been included author details and their design is not mentioned clearly For, for your understanding, madam. What is happening here? Are you very busy? Madam, I am. Uh, continuing medical education you can earn cme credits by reading this article three articles in every american journal of psychiatry issue comprise a short course for up to one amapra category one credit each the art course consists of reading the article and answering three multiple choice questions with a single correct answer cme credit is issued uh, only online readers who have uh, who want credit must subscribe the agp continuing medical area uh, education course program 
uh, select American Journal of Psychiatry at that site, take the uh, courses of their choosing, completing an evaluation form, and submit their answers for CME credit. A certificate for each course will be generated upon successful complete, uh, completion. This activity is sponsored by American Psychiatric Association. Thank you. मुझे नहीं पता यार बिन आपके पास नहीं नहीं इसको तो मतलब Not able to say, no, ma'am. Only ADHD people has only depression. Maybe they are going to have the clinic symptoms, many things. Yes, yes. कुछ डाउट है? 